Good afternoon. My name is Ronnie Lee Shelley Jr. I'm a graduating senior at Iowa State University. I'm in the Community and Regional Planning Department of the Design College. I'm also in the Honors Program. This is my capstone project for the Honors Program. For this project, I wanted to research the public transportation system of Escambia County in Northwest Florida, and I wanted to see how well they were serving dependent riders or if any of them were being left behind. A dependent rider is someone who depends on the transportation system to make it to different institutions such as work, banks, schools, etc. To narrow down my focus, I decided to create a subgroup of dependent riders. Single female headed households with no vehicle access and earning below $20,000 a year. For my project, I used the 2010 decennial census data and I also use ArcGIS to geospatially analyze this data. Since my subgroup doesn't come in a nice neat package within the Census Bureau's data, I had to create an additional subgroup of those three factors. The first factor is households with no vehicle access, the second factor is households earning under $20,000 a year, and the third factor is single female headed households. I created individual maps of all three factors and then I imported the data from the census into each one of the polygons. Now the data comes in several different forms. Blocks, which are city blocks, give or take. Then block groups, which have about 600 to 1300 people. And then you have census tracts, which consists of many different block groups. For this project, it was ideal to use block groups. The first two maps the distribution of households with no vehicle access and the second map distribution of vehicles houses under 20,000 were, were in block groups. The data for the third map for female headed households was in blocks. The fourth map is the current bus system for the Escambia County Area Transit of Northwest Florida. To organize my data, I inputted the Census Bureau's data into each polygon or block group. After that, I created a count for each individual polygon of how many times my factor was met. In this map, the distribution of households without access to a vehicle, I counted how many, how many households in one block didn't have vehicles, and then I normalized it by how many households there were in total. This gave me different percentages, which range from 0 to 100. To determine the threshold of significance for each individual polygon, I decided to use the theory of standard deviations and that the concentration of data falls mainly between the first standard deviations, above the mean and below the mean. So to have a polygon with significant concentration of my sub-subgroup, would be two standard deviations or higher. The color code red represents two standard deviations or higher above the mean for concentration of data. As you can see in the first map, there's a high concentration in the center of the county. Pensacola is right here. We've also got another high concentration in the northwest. On the second map, the distribution of households with incomes less than 20,000, we have a high concentration in the center of the county, Pensacola area also. And the third map, we have an equally distributed amount of significant areas within the center of the county. We also have a couple spots of high concentration on the extremities. The next step was to take the block map and turn it into block group data and re-aggregate the census data into a block group map. This is the distribution of female headed households. Once we re-aggregated the data into the polygons that are the same throughout the others, we can see that there's a high concentration in the northeast and high concentration in the center of the county. The next step was to overlay all three maps and to create one solid map. The difficulty in this is that two standard deviations for 
the distribution of households with no vehicle, two or more standard deviations starts at 12%. On the map for the distribution of households with an income less than 20,000, the distribution for the two or more standard deviation starts at 36 percent. So to have this uneven and to overlay them is almost impossible. To get around this, I decided to take and recategorize each one of the polygons according to their color, be the color representing the different standard deviation position. I categorize the polygons that have two or higher for the standard deviation as three, I categorize the dark gray, which are below them, as two, the light gray below them is one, and the white being zero as zero. I then created an attribute table in ArcGIS, combined all three maps, and then added the new attribute table to come up with figures between zero and nine. I then normalized that attribute table by three to come up with zero, one, two, and three on a final map. This is the final map. As you can see, there is a high concentration of the final subgroup of dependent riders, single female-headed households with no vehicle access and below 20,000 a year in the northeast of the county. There's also a high concentration in the center of the county this being Pensacola in this area. You can also see that one of the only lines for the bus system runs specifically to this area. You can also see a more intricate web of bus lines in the center. If we zoom in to the center, it almost looks like these lines specifically go to each one of these highly concentrated polygons for the subgroup of, independent, of dependent riders. My results of this study tell me that this Camby County Area Transit System of Northwest Florida serves this subgroup of dependent riders very well. Single-headed households for females with no vehicle access and below $20,000 a year. If I had to make a suggestion, it would be this area could use a line to it. In our first map of households with no vehicle access, the distribution had a high concentration in this polygon, but yet because of the average of the other three maps, it's no longer a high concentration. They could easily extend this line to meet that polygon or block group. I have attached a PDF, this PDF, to this file so you can further analyze each individual map, the final overlay map, and read the summary, the objectives, my methods and data, phases three methods for the overlay of these maps, and the conversion of the block into block group, and then also my final conclusion. Thank you for your time.